Hey Ricky Acorn. Yeah, I'm looking at your uh, little comics theory repository, um, if you will, and I have to say it's very informal. I, I really do. I mean, it's got some great information, and you got some great theories as to uh, the fact that the Genesis wave, in your opinion, uh, from a storyline perspective, occurred in the pre-soft reboot. Uh, of the Sonic comics. I mean, you, you basically point out the fact that a majority of it, as you say here, and I quote, Super Genesis Wave was planned from early on, and there are hints of it in Silver's stories. Uh, and in case people probably don't know what you're talking about, uh, there were several Sonic Universe arcs centered around Silver, as well as some main Sonic comic arcs or stories, multi-parts, if you will, uh, centered around Silver going to the past and the pr going to the past or even the future or alternate futures or whatever, trying to figure out what caused his world, his timeline, his future, to become a to become the 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 disaster um, that it did, and um, you know they, they they like I said they spent several story arcs in the universe. They used a portion. In fact, they made it a one of the major plot points. Of the Mecha Sally arc, because the one constant theme in all of these uh, Silver stories was there was a traitor, and as we found out in the last issues, uh, before worlds collide and the soft retcon reboot, the traitor was Sally. But what Silver theorized and figured out was this was Sally not acting on her own accord because she was roboticized and weaponized as Mecha Sally. Which is a good point there, but you do mention in these four theories, you mention how Silver travels back in time that whenever he does the future ch his future changes in random in seemingly random random ways and you even mentioned that the change makes no sense and that the world was and basically the world stays the same it's destroyed and it was destroyed by something completely different every time he goes back now you theorized it's the genesis way because as you put it, Eggman launched it in every timeline. And as you say, and this is your first theory, you say the Genesis Rave randomly changes, and because of that, the, the Genesis Rave randomly changes the universe so that whenever Silver goes back in time and made any kind of change, as you point out here, the Genesis Wave would rewrite the reality in a different way. Now, you talk about in your second theory how Silver tried to go back to 30 years after the present. But ins instead, he traveled to an alternate zone. Be and you mentioned that it is that we know it's an alternate zone because when he defeats Perfect Tikal, uh, uh, which is a fusion of Tikal and Chaos, uh, in that zone, nothing in his future uh, changed. And you even mentioned it's the same thing that happened when he went to another alternate universe uh, featuring Jana Ka, which is basically that in, that uh, universe's incarnation of Lala Su, which a lot of people, if they know what universe arc I'm talking about involving Silver, basically, as some people put it, was Ian's slight adaption or loose adaption of his other M 
webcomic. And that basically, when he went back to his town from there, nothing changed. And you mentioned that Silver is more experienced with time travel, that he should have gone back to where he was intended to. But you mentioned that the reason the universe he was traveling to didn't, but you mentioned the reason is the universe he was traveling to didn't exist 30 years later. You mentioned, mentioned that it was already rewritten by the Genesis way. And that when Silver tried to travel to a time period area that didn't exist, he was sent to the closest uh, proximity or the closest uh, uh, relation when it comes to that time time world or that time uh, that timeline that 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 world that alternate universe or that period if you will you say here in the second theory that in this multiverse the Genesis wave was launched but the super Genesis wave wasn't so the Mobius X years later universe still existed now, your third theory about this is Mammoth Mogul. Mammoth, uh, Mammoth Mogul. Mogul, because as we've seen in some of the uh, alternate in the future, Mammoth Mogul is basically like a mentor. Now, it's kind of played up that Mogul might be playing with Silver or using Silver to his own advantage. But you point out in the th your third theory here that Mammoth Mogul is losing his memories of the past. Of the past. That, and that this is because every time Silver goes back in time, Mammoth's memories get more and more faint and you point out that that could be the result of the genesis and you now you point out that it sounds awful an awful like it it sounds you basically say that with in your third theory here that mammoth's memories fading away and getting more forgetful sounds an awful lot like a genesis wave is affecting him like the Genesis wave that you talk about that's already been launched in these other timelines is starting to affect him as, you know, every time Silver goes back, back in time and, you know, goes back in time and returns. And that you point out the reason for this is he's, is because he's slowly being erased further and further from existence because he doesn't exist in the final new continuity or soft rebooted retconned uh, world. Oh, well, the Super Genesis Wave rewrites Sonic's side of the multi-universe. Now, your fourth and final theory so far is information about the past is inaccurate and hard to come by. You point out, you, you ask if we've ever wondered why Silver always gets stuff wrong. You say that it could be that information is hard to come by after the disaster. But you point out that Silver is, the, is only able to obtain bits and pieces of the past. And that Silver has an entire library on Ox Island at his disposal that he can use to get information. You say that most of the information Silver is able to Glean are half truths, and you point out at the end the reason because the reason is because in Silver's time, I'm um, the universe has been rewritten by the Genesis wave. Information about the pre-Genesis wave world is hard to come by. Now, Ricky, I I will say this: you do bring up some good theories here, and I'm not arguing that they're not good theories. They really are. And I'm sure if you were to get into a debate with anybody, on our, not a, well, yeah, sort of a friendly debate with anybody, they might agree with you or they might disagree. But you do bring up some good points here because, you know, when Silver tries to find information about 
who the traitor is in his timeline, there's hardly any information. The only thing he ever gets his hands on is a diary by Antoine. Is a diary by Antoine that basically to him gives Silva maybe the clue that Antoine or somebody that Antoine knows is the traitor. Now what's interesting and you didn't point this out was in the 30 years later arc that he's part of there's a, a panel or a scene with Sally She's talking about something, and Silver theorizes in his mind, could she have been the one, or could she be the traitor? No, couldn't be. See, he's already, and you see, there's that hint right there, and Silver's theorizing right there, kind of thinking, could Sally be the one? Could she be the one that caused all this? You know, he's already thinking maybe Sally's a prime suspect. Because if out of all the freedom fighters, the original, you know, the original uh, group, you wouldn't probably suspect her. And yet, fast forward to the Mecha Sally arc, and there you go. But you do bring up some good theories. And again, I'm not arguing that they're not good theories. However... You know, when you look at it, some people might say it's just, you know, it's got some good points. Right? And you, you know, basically, when people look at this, they'll be like, when they read this and look at it, they'll be like, you know what? You have good points. You're probably right about a lot of this. But, but we never knew about the Genesis wave at all. We didn't know about the Genesis wave till we got to 225. Now, true, Ian Flynn, plan, like any comic book writer, plans out his stories way in advance. Okay, he plans out his stories way in advance. So, we probably didn't know about the Genesis wave until it happened in around 225. And we didn't know there was going to be a crossover unless you read both the Mega Man and Sonic. So again, we had no idea what was going to happen. But you, like I said, you do bring up some good points. Because it seems like anytime Silver would go back to his time, whether it was at the end of a story in the main comic or in one of his universe arcs, things would not really change that much. Would, you know they th you know things wouldn't really change that much and they, they they would basically stay the same you know they there wouldn't be nothing different and the only difference would be how the world came to be how the disaster hit would always be different so you do bring up some good theories that the Genesis wave could have happened in alternate timelines now here's my theory on this you you now here's my thoughts on this. You bring up some good theories. I know I sound like a broken record saying that, but you bring up some good theories. Here's what I think. If any of this does connect, if your theories connect in any way, that there's something Ian Flynn's got planned real soon. He's got something planned real soon that's going to involve a Genesis wave. It's going to involve a massive one. Probably one bigger than they've ever expected, ever experienced. And it might just affect all time. It just might. But again, it's all about, you know, if it's connecting, if there's any kind of connection. I mean, let, let's be honest, we can theorize about any, all things all we want. You know, when DC did the new 52 lineup, 
a lot of fans obviously theorized that this was just another alternate universe of the DC Comics that was very close was in connection, if not down to the wire, if not down to a pinpoint wire of what the original DC Universe was like. There was always, or the previous one was like, basically down to the de tiniest itsy bitsiness of details. You know what I'm saying? So, to me, you know, looking at how fans would theorize that and think, okay, that's just another, this is just a new timeline, a new alternate universe they want us to get used to because it's very similar even to the tiniest detail. And the same with the Marvel Now universe and stuff like that, how obviously it's fans will theorize on it being an alternate universe, an alternate take on the Marvel characters. It's the same with us. You know, we can theorize this all we want. And we might be correct in some things. We may or may not be correct. You know, one of the things that got me kicked off at times, in my opinion, from the Bumble King forums was the fact that I always theorized, if not almost guessed to a T, exactly what Ian Flynn was going to do. We thought I was typing it up or I did a video on audio. I always seemed to guess exactly what was going to happen to a T. Almost, in my opinion. And I think that's, and I believe in my opinion, that's what got me kicked off. Partially. It might have been other things that I do regret. And I'm very sorry about. But the truth is, when, when people like you theorize this, I can almost, if not totally agree with a lot of these theories. And almost see the connection. You know, right to the point. I mean, why is it every time Silver would go back, nothing would change? <laughs> You know, the disaster would just be caused by a different outcome. What happened? And again, we did get some hints, maybe, with 30 years later, that we kind of knew who the traitor was going to turn out to be. Because even Ian had Silver thinking, could it be? No way. But still, it's, you know, you know made us think, you know, is Ian going to go in that direction? You know, so, but... The, the way I look at it, the way I look at it when I read these theories, again, I can definitely, just out of my own experience, I, I can definitely agree with a lot of these being almost accurate to a T. The only person I think that would have to come out and confirm that there's any kind of connection, and I mean any kind of connection, would be Ian Flynn himself. You have Ian Flynn himself come out and at least confirm that there is some kind of connection in these theories and that maybe in previous stories leading you know leading up to 225 and after worlds collide oh, it is having some kind of connection well then Or have any kind of connection, in other words, hinting at something like this happening. And then, hey, that's great. And kudos, and kudos to you, Ricky, for figuring it out, theorizing it, and seeing the connection, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. But again, this is what to me, but again, it's, I think... But again, I do agree, just from my own experience in guessing things and theorizing things, I definitely could see a connection. The only person I think they could really confirm if there is or was going to be any kind of connection, especially with the hints that was thrown here and there, has to be Ian Flynn himself. So, but good job on, the, on your theorizing of the Super Genesis wave. And anybody watching this here on YouTube, I will try to provide the link down below, but check this out at the Sega forums. Give your own thoughts on what you believe, Eve, on what, you know, Ricky has to say here. And I'll talk to you all later.